yeah that you know i'm very very emo when i think about this um hi here are my august favorites So this year is just zooming by and uh, quite a few things this month. One is this new lip color. I have it on. It magically appears. So this is by Urban Decay and it's called Lo-Fi Lip Mousse. You can see it. So it's the shade that I'm using is Frequency. I really like the shade. It's kind of this um, vermilion. It's like red but with a touch of vermilion, like a bit orangey. Um, you can see and it's really cute because it comes with its own applicator. I don't actually use the applicator. I just see, you can see it's completely clean. I just kind of use my finger and dab it on. So it goes on uh, very matte, very velvety, you can see. And um, it gives it a little bit of an undone look. Like, I know I'm generally a fan of matte lipsticks and I have my favourites. Like, I think I featured like uh, the one by... Oh, so bad of names. But the one that I feature in another favourite is something vanity and it smells of chocolate. So that one gives a very precise line if you want a very, very defined look. I like this because it gives a very soft uh, look. So it looks a bit undone. I like to use it with kind of brightish blusher and not very much else on my face. So it just looks very natural and very pretty. Yeah, so I really like this. I've not had a mousse like that. The only thing is it, it's a bit messy if you use... Oops. If you use your fingers. Do I just get it on my chin? It's a bit messy if you use the fingers, like I said, you can always use the very, very cute applicator. So, that is my new favourite for the month. Okay, another favourite for the month is this dress by iJack. iJack is, of course, a Singapore designer. And August was the month of Singapore's National Day. So, happy birthday, Singapore. And we should always try to support local. I really like this dress because it's in a shade of red that I like. I know we're still kind of continuing the red theme. In case you haven't watched uh, my previous video on how to wear red, I will link that down below or you can wait to the end. I will link it there. I do talk a bit about how to find the right shade of red for your skin tone. Um, and if you see the video, you will know that the shade of red that I look best in is kind of like this slightly vermilion-ish colour. Same as the lip colour that I talked about previously. It's like a very bright red with a, with a hint, just a hint of vermilion. So this is nice because it's that shade of red. Plus, it's red and pink. Two colours that I like very much. I find this dress very flattering because uh, the colour really flatters my skin tone. It's also very comfortable because it's it's one of those airy loose dresses and I personally wear it with sneakers although it looks really nice with uh, a belly there strappy sandal as well. So, yeah. Okay, another new favourite for the month, slightly narcissistic, is this pouch. I got this made in Bangkok when I was there a month ago. Um, is this shop where you can kind of customise stuff, you can pick the colour of the pouch and then you can pick the thread. So, oh my gosh, it's, this is not deliberate guys, but the red is the exact same red of my lip colour and of the dress before that. I just really like the sort of really bright red, so I've picked that and just put my name on it. I use this, um, it's like a multi-purpose pouch, so it carries like simple cosmetics if I'm, you know, just bringing very few things out or it's a good lunch purse. I actually got one for the guys in my office, so I got one for Liu Ying and for Ian as well. Um, I picked different colours for them, just for them to use as lunch purses or whatever. It's also good for girls if you want to keep your sanitary pad in there. Um, yeah, so it's a nice size and it's a hardy material and I really like it. I think anything personalised is, is really nice. You know, let me tell you a very lost story. When I was younger, um, you know, when personalising stuff wasn't so easily available, I remember when I went to like the US or Australia and they would have these um, personalized keychains or magnets or whatever so it, it's you can't personalize it on the spot it's just a whole bunch of names and you try to pick out your name from the list and Jade was never available that like there was always Jane and there was Janet and I would look very eagerly like oh Jane and then Janet very sad so I remember there were personalized keychains personalized t-shirts I think maybe that was the rage in Australia then and I was very sad that there was no Jade so right now Anytime I can personalise something, I will and I really appreciate personalised stuff. Um, Jade is now a pretty, I guess, common-ish name, but when I was growing up in primary school, it really, really wasn't. Let me know in the comment box down below if you want me to do a video on names, on what's in a name, what it means and what it was like to grow up with a name like Jade, which was always mispronounced in school and people always, for some reason, thought that it wasn't a real name. Yeah. Okay, that's just me and my name grass.
Okay, a favorite body lotion. Um, I actually go through so many body lotions. If you've been following my channel for a while, if you watch my empties video, I'll link that down below as well if you're interested to see the products that I like. I have really dry skin, so I I use body lotion religiously and I go through them like nothing because I just have really dry skin and I just slather it on and I go to sleep. This is one that I really like, uh, it's by Clarence. Uh, it's called Brightening Body Veil, so it's supposed to even, smooth and hydrate. I like it because it has SPF 20. It also smells really nice, like most of the Clarence products smell really nice and um, there are other body lotions that have SPF. If you are a skincare junkie, you will know that even for the face, anything with SPF doesn't sink into the skin as easily. Like it kind of leaves a veil. But it, it, out of all the body care products that I've used that have SPF, this one sinks in the best. Like it almost leaves no film at all. But uh, be warned, it is a little bit greasy. For me, it's great because I have really dry skin. If you have normal skin and or if you don't like the feeling of you know just a slight sheen then I would say this is not for you but if you like me have really dry skin and you actually like to have a bit of a sheen I like it because you know it looks makes your legs look nicer and more toned then I would say definitely go for this and it's definitely one of my favorites for the month it's almost done I need to do an empties video soon let me know if you want me to do an empties video soon drop me a line as well in the comment box down below Okay, so this one I don't know how to pronounce. It's everything is in Japanese. I think it's directly imported from Japan. It came with English instructions, which I've since thrown away because I know how to use it now. It's by Lise Pritchia. <laughs> so it's, it's an anti brassiness shampoo. I would say it's basically like a colour toning shampoo. It was sent to me as a gift uh, by the PR people. So they had one for ash hair, which is great for if you have ash blonde hair like me. They had one for pink hair, I think, if like you like Sia Xie, have pink hair and I can't remember, there was one last one, brown hair or maybe red hair. Can't remember guys, don't quote me on this. But of course, I picked out the one that's for ash hair and it says the only English word in this entire thing says brassiness because I think it's talking about how this kind of tones down the brassiness in blonde hair. If you have gone fake blonde, like me, I've been fake blonde for a while now. Um, you will know that it's hard to maintain blonde this colour. Like this blonde is nice, but it's not so nice when it's that sort of very yellow, kind of sallow blonde. It's just firstly not very natural looking. I mean, as natural as possible with Asian, right? Uh, secondly, it just looks very unflattering on Asian skin because we are already a bit yellow toned being Asian and well being Chinese especially. Um, so this tones down the yellowness and gives it that like very nice more whitish kind of tone. So I really like this. The only downside to this is that it actually smells like peroxide. I guess because it's a colour toning shampoo, it doesn't smell very nice. There is a, that smell of hair dye, but it does the trick, so you know, one of my new favourites. And so another favourite for the month is actually like a new old favourite. It's just something that I revisited. Recently, I went to Merci Marcel. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. It's this like French bistro along Tiong Bahru. And if you know me, you'll know that I'm not a huge fan of bistro food. Like I like my hawker food and my Chinese food very much. But this bistro is really quite nice. Like firstly, the place is really pretty. Like I know it's really hipster and all that, but hipsterness aside, it's just pretty and I really like it. Like it looks like how I would like my house to look like, kind of ish. Uh, the other thing is that the food is really good. So my favorite for the month is to make mention of the crab tartine. So it's like a crab avocado tartine. It's crab mixed with, I think, some sort of, I'm no chef guys, some sort of creamy thing which I guess could be mayonnaise or sour cream. Not sure. Either one, like a creamy sauce and then it's served with avocado sliced on and with bread. So if you order it like for brunch, it comes as a sandwich, not sandwich, like a tartine, which is just a a piece of bread and then it's spread on top. If you have it at dinner, I actually prefer it at dinner because it comes as like um, like a starter. So it comes in a bowl, like a dip with the avocado and then it has all these um, very crispy like biscotti thingies on the side that you dip it in. So I prefer it at dinner because the biscotti things um, are really crunchy and yummy. Like just thinking about it, I feel a bit hungry. So I would say that's my current favorite dish that I keep craving. And I even um, dragged the husband to go with me the other day, even though we had to wait for a short while, so. So I have a new favorite song for the month. It's Ocean featuring the J. Khaled. It's by Martin Garrix and it's, um, I've been playing it nonstop. Like it's, it's my current yoam. Let me skip to the good part. Okay, that's not the point of the song, but I'm sure Lily will put this in. So basically, I really 
like this song. Um, if you know, if you've been following me a while, you'll know that I like songs that either have a really good beat, really nice lyrics, or are very atmospheric. This one is really very, very atmospheric. Um, I love the arrangements and the production on this, but I also really like the lyrics. So I, I mean, that's my favorite part of the song, the drop at the chorus where it's you can put an ocean between our love, it won't keep us apart. Like there's a very romantic part of me that. I don't know, that really likes that part of the song and I have actually cut an Instagram video. I recently took a trip to Penang this month, in the month of August um, and then we, we we drove up all the way from Johor to Penang. It was like a 7-8 hour drive and then there's this menorah tunnel. So the menorah tunnel is the tunnel, it's somewhere in Ipoh which is in the state of Perak and when you hit that tunnel, it's basically a tunnel cut into the mountain. So I remember as a child, um, we used to take all these drives to Penang and it used to be really long. I mean, as a child, also you're very restless. Not that I'm any less restless, but you just, I used to be very restless in the car and it will always be like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No! 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 There yet? no. Yeah, I was one of those kids. Um, and then every time we would reach this tunnel though, my, my dad would wake us up and say, look, we're at, we're at the tunnel. And that tunnel kind of signified like we were like an hour plus away from Penang. So that was when everyone started to get very excited. But I also remember the tunnel because Dad used to point that tunnel out as an engineering um, genius. Like he was like, if you know, if they didn't cut this tunnel into the mountain, we would have to circumvent the entire mountain, and that would take a lot more time. So this is kind of like a shortcut. So I will always remember that, and so I cut that Instagram video to this song because I'm very very emo when I think about this. But um, I guess it just my mom turned sixty this month in August. She just turned sixty and. I guess I was just reminded of the fact that my parents are getting older and um, yeah, this is making me very, very evil. Life is finite, unfortunately, and the song like spoke to me. I thought of like, you know, like romantic times when like my husband and I were doing a long distance relationship, but I also thought about like if anything were to happen to me or my parents, like, yeah, the you know, very emo guys. But I just thought if anything happened to me or my parents, like nothing will keep our love apart. So I really like that song. And if you've not heard it, you know, you should listen to it. And um, yeah, don't listen to it when you're feeling emo though. And I would say you would definitely cry if you listen to it and you're trying to do a long distance relationship. Okay, very emo guys. I think it's because this month I've just been really busy and really short on sleep. By the time you would have watched this, I will be climbing um, to Everest Base Camp, so wish me luck on that. I hope I, you know, arrive back in one piece to be able to say hi to you in the next video. Otherwise, uh, drop me a line below. I've asked you a lot of things in this video, so let me know all your opinions or if you have any favourites for the month, I will want to know. I will catch you otherwise on Facebook, on Instagram and on Twitter. Bye!